Namaste. Happy lightworkers, um, way showers, healers, artists, av avatars. This is Athena Star Seed, and I normally at 7 um, Pacific Coast time do a Zoom call. And today I decided um, this is more really a Facebook one because there's so much going on right now um, in the mass consciousness and I want to reinstall a very grounded transmission for all beings of this planet. On my altar right behind this camera is the planet and um, I'm thinking of Mother Gaia every single day and I know a lot of the beings are caught up in panic, fear, um, mass consciousness, and here's what I just wanna let you guys know. Everything is gonna be okay. Everything is going to be okay. This is an opportunity for all light beings to return to the breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Yeah, just center yourself. I'd like to start out this star seed transmission with an opening invocation to call in the masters in the four directions. So, if you wanna just relax, open your heart, breathe, eyes open or closed. I want you to imagine angels on the four gates all around you. Inhale, exhale. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light return to earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men and women. May the Christ consciousness return to earth. In the center where the will of God is known, let the center guide the little wills of men and women, the center which the masters know and serve. And may it seal the door where darkness and doubt dwell. May the plan of love, light, and power restore heaven on earth. Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, Father Sky, Mother Earth, from the point of light that connects us all, please be here in the sacred circle of light. Allow me to be a clear channel for the star seed transmissions this evening for the good of all. Amen and amen. Okay, let's go over here. We're talking about fear. We're talking about change. We're talking about initiations. We're talking about global consciousness. We're talking about the dawning of a now time, presently asking each and every one of us to uptake the information of the heart. The heart. Up till this point, we have been programmable because we've been programmed. We're in a program, being programmed. And I'm asking each and every one of you to return to the center, unplug, and plug back in to the highest intuition, your own. The highest intuition, the center of your own stillness. Unplug from outside sensory data, outside sensory data, and unplug in internal stillness and meditation. Now, what happens when we actually do that? We withdraw from the sensory world and we go into the stillness. We refocus our awareness and our perspective on the internal. When we realize, when we close our eyes, these two eyes of duality, 
our singular eye opens up of unity. And in the unity of infinity, from where I'm broadcasting, there's only love. There is only love. There is only love. So now, those of you who might not understand what the difference is of changing perspectives and jumping paradigms, as a personal trainer and a body worker and an athlete on a very grounded level, I will tell you a balanced state of consciousness in a theta frequency raises your immunity. A balanced state of consciousness in your anatomy creates new chemistry, serotonin, raising your frequencies of thought. A balanced state of body language increases mental clarity and emotional intelligence to apply solutions to the issues around our circumstances at higher octaves on a very practical application level. Let's ground spirituality and plant a seed in the deep, dark earth. Let's ground metaphysics into our everyday, walk-a-day world. Let's ground new technology, inner engineering, into outer reality manifestation on a radio station that's a higher elevation than possibly Fox News or CNN. Consciousness not not. Into a dot, a singular dot, returning you back into the center where heaven is heaven. The center is heaven. Lest ye be like little children, we shall not see the kingdom of heaven, for it is within. And what does that mean? That our reality in truth is generated and created from an inside construct, projected to an outside screen, which then becomes a material world. So let's cite a couple of movies that might point at this theme so that we know that I'm not just saying this. There are many people saying this. So we'll start out with the matrix, pointing out a matrix model, which is a program that has a virus that infects the beings in the dimension, and you gotta unplug from that and see behind the veil. The world behind the world behind the world is an inner world of meditation. And for thousands and thousands of years, our race from the stars knew to go in to get the data to bring it out. So meditation is a sound. Let us all remember to go back to the origin. Sound. First there was the word. Om. And then there was creation. And an inner om, whether silently, or chanted aloud creates a vibration to a radio station which then projects onto the hologram peace and love, prosperity and joy, abundance and solutions. Getting caught in an illusionary narrative snares you in the story of chaos. And then we repeat chaos as repeaters, repeaters, and repeaters, spreading chaos everywhere. It's a choice to slow down the chaos and at least get one point of stillness, which is the self. Now I'd like to cite the little Buddha, the story of Siddhartha. As Siddhartha was going through his initiations, he had to be tempted by the outside illusionary world and remain still. So Mara came at him with legions of armies and fiery arrows of fear. 
and lustful women and offering of power and greed, and the Buddha sat in stillness and took his hand down and touched the earth. I invite everyone listening to this star seed transmission to get grounded. To get grounded. The ground is not afraid. The trees are not afraid. The stones are not afraid. The animals are not afraid. Take your hand and touch the ground right now. Touch Mother Earth and connect with her. Individually, personally, take your shoes off and put your feet in the earth and touch her and feel grounded. Feel her courage. Feel her stability. Feel her electricity. Feel her power. She will be here for eons upon eons. And those of us who can raise the frequency and stay with her vibration and not go into chaos or fear or trauma or panic off of an illusionary narrative will be able to sustain themselves Your immune system has a lot to do with your worry. Every year, we are faced with many challenges. I am not saying what is, is not, it is. And as it is, we come with the highest level of Jedi skills and approach the isness of what is. If you're on the 405 freeway and you see an accident, do you freak out and start to panic as if you were in the accident? Or do you just stop and stare and waste all of your time instead of focusing on your own business and driving? Do you stare at that instead of focusing on your forward present momentum? Or can you be present with yourself as the gift and pray for the situation that's appearing on the screen of your reality, co-created by the beings in this dimension, and send loving light to what is? Because what is, is, and our attention, our focus, our, and our awareness on what is can either raise it or lower it. So there's a good use of you and I paying attention. So. <laughs> my guides are like, don't be so serious. And I'm like, okay, so I'm not going to be so serious. I'm in my like strengthening mode. I get it. I get it. Okay, so here's what, here's what I think of doing when I see an accident on the freeway. I pray. Now, it doesn't matter what prayer you say because every prayer works. Now, I was raised Catholic, so I love the Our Father prayer. And many churches use that prayer, not just Catholicism. When I see an accident, when I hear a police siren, when I hear an um, ambulance siren, when I see anybody in need, I will start to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'll say the whole prayer. And then I imagine a beam of light coming down and out my heart towards the situation, whatever the situation is. So I'm using my vibration to address the isness without getting emotionally sucked up in a current that goes in a downward motion. Everything is sound. Worry is a song. And some say worry is a confusion a confirmed prayer to go in that direction 
And faith is a prayer that's going in, in an elevated, vertical, upward, ascension direction. Will you get sick? Only if you believe. Will you be well? Only if you believe. Will you receive abundance? Only if you believe. Will you have a happily ever life? Only if you believe. Now, why is belief important? How do we take faith and turn it into science? How do you take faith and turn it into fact? Well, if you look at the scientific research of the placebo effect, they've done just that. So I'd like to not repeat an entire book, but I'd like you to go and read Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. There's elegant science and a ton of research on this gentleman shifting brain waves by shifting thought forms that have an effect on the emotional state, the chemistry state, and the physical body, bringing it back into homeostasis and healing. Each and every one of you has a body that is designed to heal itself. Each and every one of us is designed in the likeness and the image of source energy. Each and every one of us has the authority to command and demand health and wellness. Each and every one of us has an auric field around our body that is either surrounded with bright light or worry, what does worry look like? Mm, it can be muddy red, it can be like a burgundy brown. Um, depression can be gray, a really smushy, like flattened gray energy in your aura. Um, if you look at the, the, the tapestry behind me, this is a vibrant meditative aura. So we have every chakra in our body produces a certain amount of photonic light. So we have like a red light at the bottom, let's just say that's our survival. And if you're beaming out, I can touch the earth and I am grounded, I am safe upon Mother Gaia. I love her and she loves me. I am born with a mission, she supports that mission. I do not have a spirit of fear, I have a spirit of trust and love. That red light glows really bright. And on the second chakra, on the second chakra, you have the orange. This is about relationships. And instead of fearing the elderly or being upset about politics or countries or nationalisms or cultures, this is our relationship creation on the second chakra. That's the orange. Let's send out beautiful creativity that everyone passes their tests everybody passes their initiations everybody brings their fear up into question and puts it in their heart and says is this true for me so you can increase your vibration of your auric field by tuning into your different chakra centers how through the art of meditation each and every one of you can look up a different way to meditate on the internet that's specific to you, that you love. There are seven, eight billion different ways to go in and up individualistically, specifically designed for each soul. You can do breathwork meditation. You can do silent meditation. You can do chanting meditation. You can do gong therapy meditation. You can do guided meditation. There are so many different meditations. You can do a dance meditation. You can do a music meditation. You can do a yoga meditation. You can do yoga nidra. You can do 
anything that your soul feels will ground it. Touch the earth. Take your hands like this and just touch the earth. Ground in. Ground in. Ground in. Now, I know it's not as sexy as the news. Can you imagine a planet where the beings on the planet considered their inner spiritual life equally important to their outer physical life? Imagine if every being on the planet spent as much inside time discovering who they were as they did watching the news. Thousands of hours since November. Thousands of people, millions of people turning off and tuning in. Imagine what would be happening right now in this frequency? Would it be getting worse or better? Well, <laughs> okay, I'll tell them. I'll tell them. Okay, so uh, my angels want me to tell you something. Okay, it doesn't matter the year. Okay, when I first got here to Los Angeles, um, I had an older car and the air conditioning was broken. And I'm driving down the 101 and it was like a, like a heat wave, right? And I remember it was like 95 degrees. And as I'm driving, I'm like, oh my God, it's so hot. And then somebody calls me on the phone. And they're like, oh my God, it's so hot. And I'm like, yeah, it's hot. And then the temperature went up. And then I talked about, can you believe that it's so hot? And then they kept talking about it. And then I hung up and somebody else called me. Did you know that there was a heat wave? And then the temperature went up. And by the time I got to where I was going, it was 30 minutes later, and I had seen my own consciousness raise the temperature four to five degrees. That's when I started considering that my mind had an effect on reality. Oh my gosh, I have Chief Golden Light Eagle. I am so honored. I love you so much, Chief. So when I started playing with that type of magic and I realized that my mind was affecting the weather, I decided to feel cool and calm down. And don't you know, the temperature went down. Now, please don't take my word for this. Please do something in your own Petri dish and test what I'm saying and see the effect that you have on your own reality based on your frequency, based on where you're channeling from. So if we want to just get really clear, we have fear and love. Fear and love. Fear is a very narrow bandwidth that gets you trapped in a very thick illusion. I would say in the tarot, I might consider that like the, the moon card. You have to see, through, see things through the illusion. And you still have to navigate if you're in the fear bandwidth. It's thick. You can still navigate. There are many light workers that have to drive through the fog fear and get to where they're going, but still hold their inner flashlight, like the hermit card. Yet there are other radio stations like love, which is very, very, very high that you can transmit no matter what dimension that you're in. And you can override the noosphere, the collective consciousness in the cities. I was talking to the chief earlier today and I was like, hey chief, what's up? And he confirmed everything that the star beings have been giving me to channel, to broadcast, trust more, fear less. Be still more. This is a blessing. This is a blessing. This is a reset for all the earthlings to take a time out to go in. You win by going in. We win by going in. The truest truths are gonna be from within. Anything that you've ever read in a book, I don't care who it's from, somebody originally went in. And then somebody cited the person that went in. And then somebody wrote about the person that cited the person that went in. 
But everything that we have in this dimension, as above, so below, came from somewhere else, from somewhere in. From the Upanishads, to the Emerald Tablets, to the Holy Bible, to the Hopi prophecies, to anything that would ever be put in the Alexandria Library, some very bold, courageous individual transcended human consciousness, tapped into angelic consciousness and above and went in through stillness. The trees know the truth. The chief used to tell me if you have a problem, because the trees know the truth. The trees know the truth. They're the ancient beings. They've been here. They're our brothers and sisters. They have been here and seen humanity rise and fall because of our out-of-balanced ego. We can learn a lot from the trees. They're selfless. They're grounded. They're giving. No matter what we do here, they continue to give the best of what they have to keep us alive. Can we say that about most humans? Fighting over toilet paper, taking more food than necessary. Is that the best we can do, humanity? Come on, wake up. Boop, 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 boop. Wake up. Share your toilet paper. Let's start a toilet paper movement. Everybody who's hoarded 30 or more rolls of toilet paper, go out and gift a third of your lot to your brothers and sisters on the planet who maybe don't have one roll of toilet paper. Come on, guys. We have to grow out of our spiritual adolescence and get into our sages. This is the ages of sages. And when the light workers realize this is the perfect opportunity to test our superhero skills. Yay, fly high. Above adversity, I have a visitor. Stay right there. I'm doing my channeling. Hey, come in, come in, come in, come in. There's never an accident. Uh, she's in the other room. But can you guys uh, go around this way? Hi, blessings, how are you? Okay, thank you for coming. Okay, we'll go through the back. Thanks. So, back to what I was saying. This is an opportunity for the light workers to test their magic. This is initiation. This situation is an initiation which can celebrate the evolution of human consciousness. What are we doing all this spiritual work? We have so many yoga studios right now. What is the point of yoga? Can we go beyond the exercise and yoke ourselves with a higher consciousness and beam down love, 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 love? What would love do? Share, encourage, inspire, heal, be still. Let's just remember the asanas, which is the exercise portion of the yoga. That is all designed to get your spine straight in alignment so that you can sit and be still. Be still and know that I am God. Now, you say that. Be still and know that I am God. Now, you say that. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still. Be. In dwelling God heal, I command you to heal as the right of God to heal. In dwelling God heal, I command you to heal as the right of God to heal. In dwelling God heal, I command you to heal, it is a right of God to heal. In dwelling God heal, I command you to heal, it is a right of God to heal. In dwelling God heal, I command you to heal, it is a right of God to heal. In dwelling God heal, I command you to heal, is a right of God to heal. Right 
life is a blessing. And when we remember that, we face all of our challenges and we bless them. Every single present moment is a gift and it's a blessing. The avatars know how to paradigm shift and look down at it and figure out why that, that this is a blessing. The ant consciousness looks up at it and doesn't know what to do, it's overwhelmed. So it looks around at the ant colony and says, what's he's doing, what's he doing, what's he's doing? Well, they're running around crazy. Well, that's what I must do. I'm gonna be like an ant consciousness and I'm gonna just run around crazy and do what the ants are doing. I'm gonna follow along, follow along, follow along, follow along, follow along. Come up several octaves and look down the way the sages and the avatars do and say, okay, humanity has some issues. I bless it. I bless this issue. I bless the humans to raise up out of fear and greed and their animalistic nature. I bless the human race to pass their tests and become holy, whole and complete and raise their immune system. I bless this life to play like a Stradivarius through me, a symphony of love in harmony with the one song, the universe is consciously, always, in all ways, playing. Unbeknownst to people that might not study music, there's something called the music of the spheres that's always playing. It's always playing, the music of the spheres. We can hear symphonies in the stars and when we tune in to the music of the spheres, we re-alchemize our body to tune up to the energy of light. In light, your inner holy lamp. In light, your cosmic connection with your star above. In light, your mind with illuminated thoughts of the sages. In light, your load by getting off of heavy processed foods. In light, your body by moving it with exercise. In light, your emotions by realizing there are also weather patterns and they'll pass. In light, your speech by using positive word spells to elevate, 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 to celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. The community that you belong to in the lotus of your own life, right? If we're all petals on one lotus, then if one petal's suffering, it does affect the lotus. And at the same time, when two petals, Chief Golden Light Eagle, and Athena Starseed and all these other light workers start to embrace their highest light, we do raise the grid. And we can overlay onto the fear projection a reflection of God, goddess consciousness. And then the stars will shine through us, as us, for us, to us, to imbue us with the powers that are dormant in our DNA, waiting to flower through a rainy day. Do you know every day I wake up and I see dandelions every day. I see dandelions every day and I make wishes. And my wishes come true. If I reverse engineer that, I have a high belief in wishes. Do you believe? Do you believe in fairy tales? A tale that's more merry from a fairy? That there are things that we don't see in this dimension that have an effect in the dimension? If this reality that we are in right now is a very small portion of what's really, really, really happening behind the veil, then what we have to imagine in our imaging center that we project onto the screen of the movie theater that we sit in when we start to drive our chariot towards the downward fear motion or the upward faith motion, 
we have to understand that it is driven by the unseen world. And if you spend time interfacing through a meditation, with the unseen world, you too will come up with the same conclusion that this is part two of two acts. This reality is part two. Part one gets initiated on the inner and the unseen. This is reflected. This is the projector. Who's the narrator? Who's narrating your projection? I ask you. To be or not to be, who's narrating your projection? I see toilet paper for all the beings that need it. I see health and wellness for all the beings that believe in it. I see a changed world that is required to change. And this is an opportunity for transformation because guess what? even through the narrative of, the, adver the narrative of this adversity, we're all getting time with our families, unplugged from the matrix. What will you do with that communion? Will you squander it and waste it eight hours a day watching propaganda? Bye bye love, bye bye fear and Worry, bye-bye, anything that doesn't return me home in the center of home. What are you going to do with your time? Most of us just got two weeks off. Redesign your time. The chief was talking to me about redoing the entire calendar because time is made up. <laughs> it's made up. And you know what? This is from our star brothers and sisters a forced meditation detention. Did I mention that we have an opportunity right now given to us by our own governments to be still and meditate? The bear hibernates during winter. The bear hibernates. We have bear DNA. We have crystal DNA. We have plant DNA. We have, a, we have animal DNA. We have human DNA, we have angelic DNA, we have avatar DNA, we have God DNA, we have celestial body DNA. We are made of the particle of the stars. And those of us who remember we were born for this time, it's time to get into the infinite moment where fear is dissolved. Whatever will be, will be. Will we be smiling and singing? Oh yes, we will. Will we be communing with one another? Oh yes, we will. Will we be doing our ceremonies every day? This is how I live every day. We are the sun. We are the sun. What is a sun? A sun is a star. A sun is a star. We are the sun. The sun is a star. The fire the magic of, of the fire. The fire, the element fire, is a consciousness. It helps in our ceremonies. For thousands of years, fire has helped us transmute fear, disease, illness, everything. Let me put the fire over here. The fire, the fire is a part of our transformation. It is. Sitting by a fire cleans your aura. I light a fire every day. I light 15 to 20 candles every day. I have altars in every room of my house. Why? Because it's not something I do when there's an earthquake or a hurricane or a tsunami. I'm not one of those light workers that only shows up when there's something to show up for. Every day is an opportunity for me to commune with the earth and to pray for humanity, to raise in consciousness. Every day is an opportunity to be a better vibration of myself. Yes, I'm in a human form for now. But based on your science on this planet, energy is never created nor destroyed. So O, oh, be one, can O oh, be. I am more powerful without a form, and yet I'm form and formless. O, oh, be one. Can 
OB? Can you be one? One thought, one mind, one heart, one love, one consciousness? If you could expand your awareness from your pers personal perspective to the omnipresent field, then you would give toilet paper to yourself. You would give grace to yourself. You would give forgiveness to yourself. You would bless yourself. There is no separation. There is no separation. In the memory of reassembling all the many parts into the whole, two praying hands, many fingers on two hands, but two hands praying is one thought. Can you be the peace of the world that prays for peace right now? Can I be the peace, the tiny little piece of peace in the world right here, right now? Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I'm at peace, I'm sharing my peace with you. I'm sharing my peace, this is my little peace, my little starseed transmission broadcast, my peace be with you. My peace be with you, my peace, here's my peace, I'm sharing my peace with you. Share your peace with the world. Share your peace with the world. Share your peace. You have a peace to share. Every soul came in with a piece to this beautiful, glorious mosaic puzzle. Every soul is a note in God's symphony. Will you keep yourself in tune? Harmony is peace. Play your piece of harmony with your soul light by staying in tune. And how can you stay in tune? By listening to broadcasts like Chief Golden Light Eagle, the Star Knowledge Conference. Chief's been traveling all over the country, praying for humanity for this time to return to the center, to do your own sweat lodge, do your own sweat lodge in your own cave of consciousness and sweat out the fear and upload all the, all the purities. Look at this, this just came on right here. Boundless abundance, that just, <laughs> in the middle of my broadcast, it says angel frequency, 888, boundless abundance. Okay, I can't even make this stuff up. Boundless abundance, angel frequency, boundless. Let's hear, let's hear what that sounds like. Boundless abundance. That's in the middle. Can you see? It's in the middle of the song. I've been listening to this all day and it has never said that. Boundless abundance. So the star seeds are transmitting through me and they just want you to know you're loved. Don't take life so seriously. Bring your peace into the center and live your life every day as if it's your last. Like live, live. Don't, don't not live. Go inside, get your own information, and then respond accordingly because based on your karma, you will have your own personal initiation tests. And if you surrender your will to the divine will, the higher will, the light of God will, your karma will be burned up. And in, Indi and in an Indian technology, that's called tapas. Tapas is when you sit, sit by an austerity, the fire of a discipline, and it burns up the illusion the outside illusion. So if I'm listening to two or three hours worth of people talking about bad news and then I watch any bad news, which I don't, but let's just say if I did, I would sit by the fire for an equal amount of time, if not twice as long, and I'd burn it all out of my aura. Fire will burn it right out. It'll burn up all the negative thought forms. Sound, the gong, will also shatter the negative thought forms and fear. Sound, light, sage, the earth, bury yourself in the dirt, do a sweat lodge. There are so many things that you can do right now to purify your system so that you're not um, receiving illusionary data because your aura, it's like, if your aura is dirty, it's like getting into a dirty bathtub. 
a dirty bath water. Like the water's all gray, you wash yourself like eight times and you jump back in and try to clean yourself with dirty bath water. That's what most people are doing when they don't clean their aura on a daily basis. And then they, they're trying to navigate this dimension and trying to get through and rise above the fear, but they can't listen to their own inner instincts because their aura is dirty. So we're gonna go back to fire. So fire is important to help transmute all of this energy. Fire, also to water, if you're near the ocean, jump in, take a salt water ocean bath, purify yourself. Those of you who are inland, Epsom salt at the 99 cent store, everybody can do that. And guess what? I went to the 99 cent store today, they're not out of it. <laughs> they're not out of Epsom salt, so you can go get some lavender Epsom salt, soak yourself in a bath, plunge yourself all the way down, 100% submerged in water, that will clear your aura. Chanting will clear your aura. Holy prayers will clear your aura. There are so many things that will help you reboot your system so that you can tune in and up to get the proper reception to know how to pass your current initiations. Now, I have another beautiful oracle deck. Light Worker Oracle, and that's what I'm going to Hi, Jenny. This is what I'm going to I'm going to read from today. Um, this is a very high deck. Um, this is Alana Fairchild. I love Alana Fairchild. She's super awake, and thank you so much that she produced these cards right in time for this situation. Yay! So, here's what the back of the cards look like. Um, these these will keep you at a high vibration. So, if you want to go to Amazon and get these cards, let's support our light workers. You know what I'm saying? Don't withhold the flow. Too much is given, much is expected. See what I'm saying? And if you share your wealth and your prosperity and your abundance and you keep going out and keeping the flow flowing, you're gonna return times 10. Do you understand? Don't hoard. I went to like three different stores and I shared my capital with people. You know what I'm saying? I went to the 7-Eleven, I shared some capital. I went to Ralph's, I shared my capital. I went to Whole Foods, I shared some capital. I went to 99 cent store. I am not afraid. I know that the abundance is going to continue to flow. You understand? We're in the thought forms of God's heart. All right. Okay. Unplug from mass consciousness. No joke. Come on, somebody type me wow. <laughs> Unplug from mass consciousness. Look at that. So here's the mind freaking out. Let's look above it. Oh, look. A oh, holy temple of light. Yeah, that's where we're going. Let's take these people out. Oh, yeah. Let's get above that. Let's get above. Wow. Thank you, Pamela Flynn. Wow. Jennifer, thank you. Who else has a wow? I picked this card. Unplug from mass consciousness. What are the odds? What are the odds? What are the odds in this deck? There's probably like 58 cards to 78 cards in this deck, and this is the one I picked. Unplug from mass consciousness. Come on. Wow. Thank you, Gabby. Wow. Wow. Right? Unplug from mass consciousness. Now, how can I really arrange this? I'd have to talk to Alana Fairchild. I'd have to have her produce the deck of cards. I'd have to know when I bought the deck of cards. I'd have to shovel the cards up. I'd have to know what to pick. I'd need to know what to read. Come on, you guys. We should be focused on the higher things in life. Wow, 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 right? Unplug from mass consciousness. So let's see <clears throat> what Alana Fairchild has to say about unplugging from mass consciousness, okay? Now, I am gonna take a sip of water because I'm by the fire. This is my alkaline water with apple cider vinegar with the mother that boosts your immune system oops i gotta find that page again mm. wow boom boom right boom boom unplug unplug from mass consciousness okay i'd like the playwright to start writing plays about the earth already shifting I'd like painters to start painting the new earth. Please, let's focus on that. I'd like dancers to start dancing a new ballet of the new earth. Oh my God, I turned right to the page. Did you see me? I picked this book up and I turned right to the page. Give me another wow, wow, boom, wow. Come on, that's amazing. 
Oh my God, this is just another, another amazing thing. Okay, the number is seven. Christ consciousness. So here's what we have. Um, I'll just hold the card up here and let's put it like this with the fire. There we go. All right. There is a belief system based on fear, doubt, and distraction that is known as mass consciousness. It says it is safer to stay within the crowd and not to question what have you been what you have been taught. It says you cannot trust the divine, mm. and to take, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to put this light closer to me. I gotta put the light closer to me so I can read what's on here. La 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 la. Here, get you back closer to me. Alrighty, I got some more light here. All right. It says that it is safer to stay with the crowd and not to question what you have been taught. It says you cannot trust the divine to take care of your financial well-being or your emotional needs. It says that you should be afraid and not take risks. It says that you should dare it says that if you dare to stand up and live your truth that you'll be lost, alone, humiliated, rejected and even destroyed. You are being guided to unplug from the systems of belief, from these systems of belief. You are capable of more creative, loving, soul-satisfying ways of living. To access this, let go of the way that is too small for your soul that you have outgrown. Oh my God, this is so good, right? All right. You are brave and aware enough to think outside of a square box, beyond what society or your peers may have considered the norm. You are supposed to be questioning things right now. You are in a transition from one way of thinking to another way of thinking. Open up to a new world which you can trust enough to live in with peace and happiness because of the upgraded new beliefs that you are now cultivating. No matter how others may resist or they may criticize your choices, perhaps your new ideas take more, perhaps your new ideas take you away from the world they feel comfortable in. Your higher guidance encourages you to keep opening up your mind to a more loving and higher reality. Isn't that the truth? This is all taking us higher. If you have been thinking along new lines and wondering if you are going crazy, your guidance tells you that you are doing a great job. You guys are doing a great job. <clears throat> you are not crazy, trust yourself. You are thinking in ways that do not belong to mass consciousness. It can seem scary at first, but once you start to realize the benefits gained from unplugging, I never read this before, I just want you to know this is a brand new deck. <laughs> If, you, if it seems scary at first, once you realize that the benefits gained from unplugging, you will enjoy the process much, much more. On the page. It will feel free to you. It will empower you to live a life on your own choosing. Opportunities and connections can open up to you in ways that will defy your old beliefs. Sometimes breaking up from the accepted norm and doing things differently or being considered weird to your family or your colleagues or your friends, it's a sign that you are breaking away from the consciousness of the masses which is not compatible with your higher frequency consciousness. Change, change, change is always good. You were born to bring new vibrations of awareness to this planet. You will find those who can benefit and even love you for this difference that you are making and those who will also be challenged or fearful of it. Either way, you can love and approve of yourself, nourish your relationships, and bring in more relationships that support you and have compassion and detachment from those who do not. Without compromising who you are and what is your truest truth. So keep unplugging yourself one layer, thought, word, and deed at a time from that which the mass consciousness would have you buy into. More stuff, more fear, more competition, more doubt, more suffering, more suffering. 
You can challenge any thought you don't want to have. Challenge any thought you don't want to have. Challenge every thought you don't want to have. Free yourself. You have the power to change your world and the world we live in as a result, one by one, one soul liberating itself, one thought at a time, invocation. Okay, Alana Fairchild, you are rocking my world, light, light worker, oracle deck. Initiation. Of my own free will, this is kind of what you say to yourself, so imagine yourself in your head saying this, okay? Of my own free will, I now ask for a spiritual intervention and divine protection through the guidance that loves me unconditionally. I now request thoroughly and completely a removal of any entity, thought form, belief system, cord, attachment, or condition from my body, from my mind, from my soul that does not resonate with the frequency of pure unconditional love. I ask for the process for this to happen right now with divine mercy, divine wisdom, and divine blessing. I call upon my own inner power and my strength to listen to my truths as I stand in the light of those truths as the perfect time and in the perfect way with the perfect loving and empowering assistance for my own spiritual team to assist me. Through divine grace and my own inner spiritual authority, so be it through divine grace and my own spiritual inner authority, so be it. May all beings be blessed by the divine love. May all beings be happy. May all beings be free. Boom! Come on! Unplug from mass consciousness. Unplug. Unplug. Unplug from mass consciousness. Unplug for mass consciousness. Unplug from mass consciousness, light workers. Unplug from fear. Every initiation door opens in. Are you brave enough to go inside and listen to your own news? Because the gospel is good news. The gospel means good news. Listen to your own goodness. The truth is, there's only love. Love heals everything, every disease, every disability. I'm not just speaking from some spiritualist. I'm speaking from a scientific, practical application of how I got out of a wheelchair. I applied spiritual principles and I loved my injury. The way to protect yourself from the corona blah, blah, blah is to love it. Not to fear it, not to resist it, not to panic over it, but to send love to it. It's actually a conscious entity too, doing its part to drive you in and up because when you can't rely on your government to save you or your religion to save you or your parents to save you or your friends to save you or your culture to save you you are commanded to sit on the inside and save yourself save yourself meditate into your own book of life Celebrate the secrets of your own soul. Penetrate your own inner bubble of doubt and fear. Penetrate your own bubble of doubt and fear. Pop it. You were born for greatness. You were born for greatness. When you know who you are, you'll know why you came. And you know what you're supposed to be doing and how that'll impact human consciousness for millennia to come. 
And if you're listening to this message, you're one of those that has a responsibility to respond with love to this situation and all situations. <laughs> I remember volunteering. I sat there and I was like, pick me, pick me, I'm going down, I know what I have to do, I'm ready to go. You know, how many people get into the NFL and cheer to sit on the sidelines? I'm gonna sit the bench the whole season. Yeah, I got on the team, but you didn't do anything, you sat on the bench. Get in the game. Get in the game, athletes. Get in the game, avatars. Get in the game. The game of life and how it's played. Florence Shovel Shin. The game of life and how it's played. How humanity wins. Get in your own game. Avatar, you're the avatar in the game. Come on, dreamers, wake up. This is a dream that we're dreaming together. Are you a conscious dreamer? Or are you a default dreamer? What dream are you in? I'm in a nightmare. Who wrote that? I don't know. He wrote it and I just read it. Well, stop reading that. What'd you write? Oh, I wrote this great story about her. The whole planet changed after this great good mass meditation. Everybody plugged into their heart stream and the whole new earth was born out of this darkness. Everything's born out of the darkness. Every star is born out of the darkness. Every seed grows in the darkness. The void is there present that holds all of creation. Let the darkness be our friend. Hello darkness, my old friend. It's nice to see you here again. Laughter is the medicine of muses. Can you laugh through your fear? Can you trust in the unseen? Can you resist running around crazy and sit on a cushion for an equal amount of time that you do your business? Invest in your soul because it pays. Invest in your soul because it pays. Invest. Invest in courage so you can buffer off the slime everybody's throwing at each other. Invest a breastplate of truth when you drive down the 405 and all the panic and the fear, going back to the grocery stores and the Costco's. Invest in the illumination of your own acceleration to get better reception of the highest radio station. Invest because it pays. And if we pay attention to the investments, we accelerate. When we pay attention and awareness to the highest levels of streaming thoughts coming through our radio stations, when we pay attention to the highest frequencies of light, where attention goes, energy grows, a new tapestry is painted on this reality of a canvas that we all co-collapse on as a new earth. I know you have guys on this planet, like Edgar Toll, who told you there was a new earth coming. Just like when you clean your room, it gets messier before it gets cleaner. Come on, hello, we're rearranging the furniture on the planet. Everybody, come on, enjoy the chaos. Put joy in everything. Every present moment, you're handed a coin of opportunity, heads and tails, a coin of opportunity, a coin of duality, good and bad, a problem and a solution. It's the Zen of life to look at the problem adversely as the solution. It's inside of itself. The problem and the solution are together. Invest. 
in a world of light in your aura. Invest in building a fortified stream of song around you, protecting you with fairies and angels and ascended masters that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are. Thank you, divine avatars, for feeding the homeless for over 20 years. Thank you, divine avatars, for writing powerful narratives and putting them in to the mind and consciousness of the planet through films, like Athena. Thank you, beautiful avatars, for talking to the star beings, Chief Golden Eye Eagle, and writing all your star knowledge conference books and your, your messages and your ceremonies. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you divine avatars, for making a difference on this planet, protecting our children keeping trust and love and faith and peace alive. If everyone on this planet is a note in God's symphony, then we are responsible to tune in and up our instruments and decide consciously to be that piece of peace that we bring to the orchestra. Has anybody ever been in an orchestra? Well, like a marching band. And I've seen orchestras live. But in the marching band, if one musician comes into the room of musicians where everybody's playing their own you know, stream, everybody has their own line to play, the saxophone players, the drummers, the cymbal players, the violin, the string section, everything, the brass section, there's a conductor, which is God. But if one person's coming into that symphony, all jacked up and jaded and late and they don't have sheet music and they're out of tune and they didn't tune up their string instrument, they can throw off the sound. However, if 144,000 musicians will stay in tune, they will multiply exponentially and nothing can get them out of tune. Nothing, no one, May the fire of light you were born with bless your fiery soul, transmute all your fear into gold. May the fire of light that you were born from transmit light to humanity, alleviating all fear for your neighbors for all eternity. May the fire of light that you were born from descended from heaven thy are. And as you realize that you have a natural origin, you were born from the stars, from the fire of light that indwells you, it beckons you to come back home, to sit inside your golden egg and realize you're not alone. Angels surround you, angels bless you, angels surround you, angels bless you. Five D's here right now, guys. Don't slip into 3D, please. I'm broadcasting from 5D. Every time is simultaneously existing. Do not stay in the 3D fear dimension. Don't get stuck in the fog. The fog of fear. It's harder to see. You can do it, especially if you're an avatar. You can do it, but why stay there? I'm going to cite a film now so that you guys can have practical application. This had two over 200 different um, holy text citing it for the author who wrote this book that got turned into a movie that was based on the truth, you know, a fictional truth. What dreams may come. When Robin Williams wanted to go down into hell and find his wife who commits suicide, Cuba Gooding Jr. and the guy that held the Akashic Records said to them, you can't go down there, it's impossible because what'll happen is you'll lose your mind. And not in a good way of emptiness, but you'll go into chaos, you'll forget who you are, and you'll get stuck in a lower dimension. Now, how many light workers are super powerful when they're on top of their game, but as soon as they get called into courage, they cave, they fold like a deck of cards. Come on, wake up, don't lose your memory. Memory is water and light. Mem ori, water and light. You're made of water and light. You're made of water and light, the waters of light. 
the waters of light are the star particles that come down and incarnate through the deep, dark void and come into this dimension through the, our womb, the mother's womb, the wombs of our mother, the stargate that we blast into. At last we're here. Now is the time to test our skills. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Fear not, for the indwelling light of God is present within me. Fear not, because the indwelling light of God is within thee. Fear not. Fear is a knot that tangles the mind and twists the intuition and negates your gut instincts and distracts you. Distraction, distraction, pay attention to me, I'm gonna scare you. Distraction, distraction, pay attention to me, I'm gonna scare you. Fear not, unknot yourself. Come on Houdini, get out of those knots. Fear not, get out of that fear not. Open your arms up and look to the heavens and surrender your will. I surrender my will. Guess what, when you surrender your will, you don't have to understand how. I don't understand how, I'm saying things, I, I don't understand how it's gonna work out, but I know that it is. I didn't know how I was gonna get out of a wheelchair, but I know that I was, and I did. I didn't know how I was gonna run a marathon, 26.2 miles after saying, you know, being crippled and having to learn how to walk it, I didn't know but it happened. How? All we have to do is clear our fear, stay in an emptiness of zero, and listen. Are you listening? Are you listening? The spheres and the heavens are singing to you the solutions. Are you listening? Are you listening, angels? Are you listening? Are you listening for the solutions for you personally to solve every issue that's gonna come across your dimension? Can you use your magic? It's time now, 5D's here, it's time now. Don't fall from consciousness and get lost and lose your memory and lose your superpowers. If you haven't seen What Dreams May Come, please watch it because I'm citing that scene for a reason. If you watch it, you're gonna understand the magnitude of how to get out of hell, which is a shallow grave. Hell is a shallow grave that you dig yourself because you dropped into your animalistic nature. Heaven is an octave of reception by staying in a surrendered state and being humble and not knowing. And when you don't know, you become innocent again. There's a beginner's mind. There's the magic and wonder of how things are gonna unfold for us as a human race to reboot our entire planet. We have the most wonderful time about to happen for us. We're rebooting an entire race of people. And those who can transcend out of fear will survive and thrive. And their art and their magic and their music and their poetry will be remembered for thousands and thousands of years. We are the Desmond Tutus of our time. We are the Mahatma Gandhis of our now moments. We are the Mother Teresas of compassion by sharing toilet paper, very simple. What would love do? What would love do? Because this is all between you and God anyway. This is all between you and God anyway. Everything is between you and God. There by the grace of God I go. There by the grace of God I am. Humble me so that I may see your beauty more clearly. Humble me so that I may see this creation as beauty. Humble me so that I may be more loving and serving. Humble me so that I may be an instrument of love.
humble me. Humble me. Everybody's playing their role perfectly. There are no victims and no villains. If newscasters are doing their job, bless them. But please do your own broadcasting because it affects your aura and your family and your community and your country and your continent and your cosmos. And at the end of your life and my life, we're the only ones we have to answer to with accountability on what we did with our vibration. Did we scare our brothers and sisters on the planet? Did we smear and spread fear everywhere and start touching everything and spreading these viruses of fear? Or did we wash our aura clean? Let's sanitize our aura. Everybody's talking about sanitizing their physical body, but your aura goes out six to nine feet. Let's sanitize our aura. Freshen it up. Let's fluff up our aura. Let's sanitize our aura by sitting by the fire and feeling more light than we do anything else and blessing everything. So, um, let's see, I'm not sure even what time it is. I normally channel for an hour on Monday nights. Um, let's see, oh wow, it's 8.30. I think I've been channeling for an hour. Um, if there's anyone that has a question, I will speak directly to the question because I can see Gabby Sierda is here, Jennifer Phillips, what dreams may come. Oh, also to second film, The Celestine Prophecy. That's how you can start opening up your extrasensory perceptions, telepathy, energy transfer, and invisibility. Okay, so it's kind of dated because people maybe 20 years ago knew about it. It was a very, very popular book, all based on the truth. So if you can watch the film, you can see where you're at with, are you in fear? And you become visible and you drop into the 3D? Or can you transcend the fear and accelerate? into invisibility and go up an octave and be in 5D or above. And then I think the last film I'm going to give you um, is, give it to me again. Come on, what is it? Laws of Eternity. Thank you. <laughs> the Laws of Eternity. Please watch The Laws of Eternity. Um, these young kids create a spirit phone, open up a stargate, go up about nine octaves, and this eagle god show them when they're afraid, they open up a black hole and they drop a dimension. And when they are full of compassion and love and the higher attributes of love, the higher sage and saint qualities, they ascend to these high, high, high dimensions and they become bodhisattvas and Buddhas. Which means they think of their life force as an elevation for all of humanity. They're thinking of ways to help people. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that we share our toilet paper, okay? I have four rolls of toilet paper and I'm sharing them with all my roommates. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm inspiring you to share, but at, if you watch this movie and you go up, the laws of eternity, if you go up to the angelic plane, this is where you don't need to be thanked for helping people. This is where you, you intentionally think every day, how can I help somebody? Like you wake up and like, who can I help today? Who can I help today? Like you're consciously thinking, who can I help today? Not, I hope I get mine, I hope I get mine, I hope I get mine. Back away, back away, back away. You know? Don't shun the elderly. You're only shunning yourself, you know what I'm saying? You know, I had a client call me um, a couple nights ago for a reading and super awake. She had a near-death experience and she's like an attorney, a regular attorney, but basically a very old soul. And she went around to her apartment complex and left notes on everybody's door and said, I'm here to help you. You're not alone. I love you. If you're sick, let me know. I'll run to the store for you. I'll pick you up some things. I understand what's happening, but don't feel like you have to go through this by yourself. I mean, that's what she did with her day off. You know what I'm saying? She didn't watch the news all day long and call a bunch of friends and spit out the same Blah, 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 blah. She wrote beautiful notes and put them all over everybody's door and said, I'm here if you need me to go to the store to get you something. If you're sick, let me know. I'll make sure that we take care of you. I mean, come on. This woman is like amazing. Let this opportunity bring out the best in humanity. Yeah? 
get your crayons out and start coloring. Humans sharing and giving and blessing and abundant. And if and when our governments decide to help us pay our bills, which I think is a nice thing happening, let's really imagine that that happens. Every being on this earth should be able to have a safe, affordable dwelling, if not for free, clean water, and access to food. That should just be, like in my, on my planet, everybody should just get that. That's like what everybody gets. Women get paid to actually stay home and raise the children. Because when that happens, we don't have criminals running around here trying to fix mother-father issues. We have women that are supported that aren't getting into bad relationships because they're afraid of financial ruin because they, if they get pregnant, they, they're alone. We're not compromising our morals or our spiritual belief systems by getting in negative relationships because we're safe, whole, holy, and complete, and protected. And I'm gonna keep imagining that until it's fully realized, okay? Because I'm also a single mom and I rely on Source every day and I'm in partnership with the Divine. So the Divine has my back and my front and pays me to be a conscious mommy. And I was instructed from the star beings to start a YouTube channel about four years ago called Raising Reverence. So I did a huge number of shows on how to raise your vibrational frequency from singing to puppet shows to fasting to detoxing to channeling to Ask Athena intuitive readings, whatever thing I could think about physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, things I could do to broadcast a version of life, a little Athena slice of life that could raise a frequency off of one YouTube show. So those of you who are watching, please subscribe. Subscribe to Athena Starcy Transformational Mystic. And share the shows. Like this, you, this broadcast right now on Facebook Live will be uploaded onto YouTube. And it's important that we circulate high messages, like this is the good news. If we all share good news, then we can at least have a shot at, at getting the minds of the light workers to redirect into a paradigm shift of higher states of consciousness to enlighten their own mind. The laws of eternity, yes. The Celestine prophecy, yes. Yes, yes, and yes. And I think that there was one more that's like really profound. Here it is. Okay, rebirth of the Buddha. All right, they're telling me you guys got to watch that one. Okay, this everything is in this one. All right, this is actually this is somebody write this down. Type it in so everybody sees it. Rebirth of the Buddha. Okay, it's um, on the Kingdom of Light YouTube channel. Uh, so she put it back up again. Somebody took it down for a while because it's very profound. Basically, there's this little girl who becomes like this Buddha. And the government puts on TV that a tsunami is coming. And they project it on so many different news stations that everybody gets scared. And the little girl shoots like, I think, lotuses out of her consciousness. And it shifts the paradigm. And it changes so that people can wake up and realize that it's a projected illusion. Like wag the dog the truman show stranger than fiction i'm just saying i'm just saying thank you very much thank you so much oh gabby you're just a doll now everybody has it because if they watch this video and on youtube i mean on their on um, facetime they'll see the conversation and they'll see the movies please Please, please, you're home, you have children, you're home with your children, isn't that amazing? We get to be home with our children, yay! Watch these shows, show them to your children. I mean, these are um, Japanese animes and they're very powerful, it's really about mind control. Who's controlling your mind? Is it your Buddha consciousness or your fear consciousness? Who's boosting your immune system? Your soul? Don't let your ego run your show. Your ego is a beautiful servant, but a poor master. Let your soul master your own film. Let your soul master this narrative that you project onto your screen of reality. Oh, let's give him one more. 
Jennifer or Gabby, the egg, the adaptation of Andy Weir's viral short. That's 15 minutes of God consciousness right there. The egg, it's a black and white film. It's on YouTube, it's free. All these films you can pretty much get on YouTube. The adaptation of Andy Weir, W-I-E-R's viral short story. This kid dies, he gets hit by a car, he meets God in between lifetimes and God tells him the meaning of the whole reality and how many times he incarnated and why he's still incarnating and what he's learning from his incarnations. Things that make you go, mm hmm. The egg. Not just the regular egg, but the egg dash the adaptation of Andy Weir's viral short because everybody tried to redo the egg and it's just not as good. There we go. That we got it now. The adaptation of Andy Weir's viral short. Yeah, it's in black and white. Please only watch that one. And after you watch it, sit in a contemplation in the silence of your own mind for at least 11 minutes and then come out and channel through automatic writing and write, how can I apply this to my life right now? Because I'm all about practical application. I'm a mystic, but I'm also a scientist. I consider myself a plumber because at work I'm opening people's flows. When I'm channeling at the Mystic Journey or for my clients around the world who call me, I'm, I'm, I'm undoing clogged flows. If I get a chakra and it's clogged, the base chakra fear is clogged. The second chakra, relationships and lust, that's the clog. The third chakra, your will is ego will instead of God's will, that could be a clog. Your fourth chakra, this is about conditional love versus unconditional love. Conditional love, you got a clog. Here, your fifth chakra, speaking lies over the truth. And most of the lies we tell ourselves, I'm not good enough, I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not brilliant enough, I don't have anything. You, these are the lies you tell yourself, block fifth chakra. Boom, I help everybody clear that. Seeing through the illusion. This is an illusion right here. If, you, if you're seeing fear and you can't see anything higher than what you're looking out here, you got a clog in your third eye. That needs to be flushed out. That's why the plumber needs to be hired and go in there and row to a rooter that third eye. And then this, if you're attached to something, a relationship, a job, a narrative, fear, a person, money, greed, whatever. If you're attached, there's a clog in the seventh chakra and you can't flow. So detachment would be an unclogged seventh chakra. So that is why I'm here to do the work that I'm doing. So if you go to askathenaintuitivereadings.com, askathenaintuitivereadings.com, you can purchase a session, whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or 60 minutes, depending on how soon you wanna get unclogged and how, I could pretty much unclog anybody in 15 minutes to the level of their allowing. However, if you are resistant to opening the flows, it might take 30 minutes or an hour. You know what I'm saying? However, most people that let go, we are unclogging the crown. Yes, we are unclogging the crown. The coronavirus, thank you. Coronavirus unclogging the crown. Thank you, Jennifer Phillips, another light worker. Corona, also corona, and the, the, there's like, you know, in, in the eye, the cornea. So we're looking at crown, corona, um, opening up the flows, crowning ourselves. How about turning viruses into verses, like poetry? Yeah. So I will put underneath this link, Ask Athena Intuitive Readings, and you can check it out yourself. And I will also um, give you information on all the movies that I cited so that you can tune in and check the links. And those of you who enjoyed this channel, please spread the gospel, spread the good news, Share these videos, inspire your friends, let them know that there's hope for humanity. This is the time for the birth of the golden age and in the deep dark womb, those of you who've ever had a baby, it gets messy before it gets clean and cute. You know what I'm saying? When that baby's going through labor, there's blood everywhere and people are screaming and everything's all messy, but healing is messy, right? My, my shaman, my, my metaphysical multidimensional shaman, Edwin from Guatemala always tells me, you know what, healing is messy. Be willing to get messy so that you can have a life filled with light. All right, beings, I love you, I love you, I love you, I bless you. I bless this situation. 
I bless your courage. Thank you so much. Continue to beam your light and love and stay in tune.